My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There are some occasions I find as a priest that I'll write my sermon on a Friday, think I got it all down, and then Sunday something will come up that will make me think I need to toss this thing out. Today is one of those occasions. I've decided not to go with what I prepare to preach, but rather to respond to what I've heard others say. This morning, a few of us gathered on our Zoom prayer time and discussion, and the group said, wow, these readings are tough. And Wendy, not to call you out over there, Wendy who read our gospel so beautifully today, wrote me a wonderful email yesterday and said, I'm looking forward to hearing you preach on the gospel. Unfortunately, I prepared my sermon on the epistle, so I'm going to preach on the gospel now. Last minute change. Yes, it is a difficult gospel today. Jesus uses phrases and expressions that terrify many of us. In a sense, I think he's trying to shock and scare his listeners. And we have to bear in mind the context of the story to get what Jesus is getting at. He's approached by John, one of his disciples, who says, probably accusingly so, Master, there are people out there preaching and teaching in your name. We must stop them. This is not right. And Jesus, probably enraged, that one of his disciples would be so exclusive in his teaching, responds to him and says, no, whoever is with us is not against us. But then Jesus adds this phrase that I think is so interesting. He says, let no one be a stumbling block to me. And he proceeds to list out what will happen to such persons. That phrase, for me as a priest, terrifies me. It terrifies me because I ponder and question, how does my way of life, my teaching, my preaching, my pastoral care, how does it prohibit others from reaching Jesus? and experiencing the profound love of God. How has the ministry of the church inhibited people's experience of faith and not allowed people to experience the the powerful, wondrous love of our God? This week, I think we recall one such occasion. As many of you know, this year, It's the first year in which we will commemorate the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation on Thursday. And I'm sorry to say, and sorry actually doesn't even do it justice, the church has done more harm than good in terms of indigenous persons. I was reminded of this a couple of years ago when I was down at the Six Nations and I heard people share their stories about how the priests treated them. It made my gut turn and wrench. I wanted to cry. And I thought to myself, how is it that we as a church, a church that's called to proclaim life for all, have been able to do such harm and such wrong? I hear Jesus getting angry and saying, how dare you become a stumbling block to me? But my message for you and my desire for all people is that they may come and have life and have it to the full. Our job as a church 
is to free, to liberate, to proclaim good news to all people, good news of freedom and joy and life, and not to be stumbling blocks to others. Yes, Jesus' words ought to scare us. He's making it clear that we ought to do nothing, nothing that prohibits others from experiencing the love of God. When you read this gospel passage in connection with the epistle of James, this message, I think, has made all that much more clear. James, although it's a letter not terribly favored by the reformers, the, the Protestant reformers consider it the letter of straw because they felt that James put too much emphasis on what we do. But James, I think, is trying to get to his community and say, look, we are to uphold one another in prayer. We ought to pray for one another. And when one of us is suffering, when somebody in our midst, maybe not even here in the church, but in our community, if somebody's suffering, then we ought to come around them and pray for them. Our job is to seek the good of all God's people. Not just the chosen few, all God's people. So if you see somebody suffering, love them, pray for them, be with them. That is the mission of the church. That's all of our mission. By virtue of our baptism, our mission is to offer a generous welcome, a generous hospitality, so that all may come to experience the life-giving grace of Christ. And if we begin to define who can and cannot come to the kingdom of God, then we've missed the whole point of the gospel. We become like John who says, but wait a minute, they're doing something that I don't like. Well, they're doing good. Support them. My friends, for me, this gospel and these readings challenge me to thoughtfully consider, and I mean this, thoughtfully consider, how am I extending a lavish and generous welcome to all? How do we as a church, St. Anne's here in the middle of Toronto, be a place where all women and men, all persons, may come experience the lavish grace and hospitality of a God who loves them beyond their imagination? And believe me, there are people that are looking for that. Some of you know the past three weeks we've begun a practice where we had the church open all day Thursdays. And I have to admit this is a bit of an experiment on my part. I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen with those days. But I have to tell you, I've been more busy on those Thursdays than I can ever imagine. Because we've been getting people coming in here People who are longing for some hope, some meaning. Longing to be able to hear somebody say, you are loved and you are important. And this has convinced me that the mission of this church, the mission of the entire church of God, is to open our doors welcome all and go out into that community and say, you know what, you are important to us and to God. The God we've come to know in Jesus Christ is a God who loves you more than you can ever imagine or hope for. And everything we are going to do as church is to radiate and share that love with all. And this is not a simple message. <laughs> this will take work. Work on all of our part. It will take conversion on all of our part. 
to confront the ways in which we discriminate against others, to name honestly the ways that our church has not always faithfully lived the gospel of life, and to say to all, you are loved and you are welcome here. Amen.